Okay, so we're picking up what we had talked about yesterday, where um, we were talking about the concept of the use of animals on Shabbat. Um, and uh, the primary thrust of what we talked about yesterday was that the reason that we can't use animals on Shabbat is because uh, like we have to give ourselves a break and, and to a certain degree our workers a break, um, we, need to, we need to give the animals a break as well. And that's really where we came from yesterday. Uh, we concluded with a, a short piece on um, <laughs> genetically created uh, you know, animals. <laughs> No, okay, so hold on one second. No, better. Let me see, maybe this, it wasn't on, hold on. Yeah, it's okay. No, it's okay. Right. hear you. It's okay. Weird, because I'm not using this. Um, that's strange. Hold on, let me, you know what? Give me one second to just change a setting on the computer. Sorry, guys. Uh, okay. I'll be right with you. Hold on. Okay, that's connected. And I hear you. Do you hear me better now? Yes. Okay. Great. I I fine. Okay. Sorry, my I, my headset was. I don't know. I guess it got disconnected over the night. Anyway, uh, getting back to where we were. Um, so what we had, yesterday we had talked about the idea that the reason we don't let uh, the, the reason we don't have animals do work on Shabbat is for the benefit of those animals. The animals need a break. Um, so so that was where we came from yesterday, um, and that is a significant aspect of the law. But as we're going to see today, it's not the only aspect of the law. Even yesterday, we already saw a little bit that there's another possibility that sometimes becomes an issue with animals, which is if the animal is out in a public area and it's, it's loaded up with something, it's carrying something, if that something would fall off, then what's going to likely to happen is, is the human uh, who's accompanying the animal or near the animal will go and, and, and carry the material himself um, and then that person will be in violation of carrying in a public domain. Um, so therefore, the rabbis had made a number of decrees against putting things on animals um, that might fall off, because if it falls off, then you're going you're gonna to put it on, and we don't want you to carry in the public domain. And again, that's all talking about an area where there's no eruv, and we're used to living in eruv, but if there's no eruv, which certainly there's plenty of places where there's no eruv, then that could be a problem also. So so although we've, my point is that although we've said um, that the main issue the Torah lays out in terms of uh, animals not doing work is so that the animals get a break themselves, it's not the only issue involved. We already saw yesterday that one of the issues that could be involved is uh, the concern that if the animal is carrying something in a, in a, in a public area where, where, where a Jewish person is not allowed to carry, so then if that item were to fall off, the Jew might carry it. So the rabbis decreed that the animal can't carry it also, because if it would fall off, the Jew might carry it. So, so, um, so that's, that's, that's my introduction to today. And um, what he's going to say is the following thing. He says, in general, working an animal on Shabbat, meaning have an animal do our work on, for us on Shabbat. Uh, in other words, to plow my field, to carry my burden, uh, or something of that nature. Um, potentially, you might say to, to, to do some other work, however, an animal could do that work. Um, you know, there's, there's a number of different things that are forbidden for us to do on Shabbat that an animal could somehow play a part in. So he says like this, In general, you have to know that when it comes to working our animals on Shabbat, there's two Torah laws and one rabbinic law, and he's going to explain each one. Yisur Torah Harishon, the forbidden law from the Torah, the first one, is Shvitat Behemto, Shlot Yisashum Masal Eba Shabbat, Elot Terech Bekaron, Shnei Mar, says that an animal rests, that it not carry a burden or drag, you know, be dragging, you know, sometimes carrying implies what's on its back. Sometimes an animal won't necessarily have it on its back, but will be connected to some yoke or something like that, and it'll be dragging along something. That's the same thing, uh, because 
of the pasuk which we talked about yesterday, the ma'an yanuach shorecha b'chamorcha, in order that your um, in order that your animal um, be uh, uh, you know be a part of of uh, 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 in order that your animal um, have rest, right? That's the that's what we talked about yesterday. Basur uh, le'balehem naniach alehem shumasa, and and therefore I'm not allowed to place a burden on the back of the animal. Even if I it, it um, even if um, someone put the burden on there, I actually am obligated um, to take that burden off. Um, I have to prevent the animal. I, like I want to stop it from happening. Um, so, because again, the goal is uh, that the animal rest. Um, again, this only applies. Uh, this rule only applies to my animal. I am only obligated to have my animal rest, um, or I would say a Jewish animal, meaning an animal that belongs to a Jew. But I am not obligated on this law. I'm not obligated on this law to have a. Um, um, by the way, I just see Joe Shami. I, I saw you came on. Uh, we're starting. I don't know if you're here for the minyan or the class. The class is 7:35 to 8, and the minyan is going to be uh, going to be at uh, 8. I'd love to have you for the class, but uh, good to see you. I see you. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll try and make the class. I, I, I finished praying, so I just <laughs> went on oh. sca.org to see what's doing. Well, I'm going to try make the class from now on. Great, great, great to see you. Uh, Thank you, Robert. Good so, morning. Good, good, good. Um, so. Um, so uh, we, we're talking about, again, the concept of having an animal work. So right now we're saying that the, we have a, a, a job, which is we, we have a responsibility to not let the animals that we own work. We need to give them a break on Shabbat. Um, but it's only the animals we own or that a Jew owns. But if it's a non-Jewish animal, then I have no responsibility for his animal to have a break. It would be very nice for him to give his animal a break, but it's not my responsibility from a, a legal perspective. Now, there's another Torah law, right? Isur Torah Sheni Hu Isur Mechamer. There's a law that's considered a Torah law, which is con called Mechamer. Mechamer is to work my, it's kind, it kind of means to work my animal like a donkey. Um, what do I mean? What, what is the, the concept of this law? Behainu Keshi Te'unam Asahu Mechamer Achareh. It means I'm working the animal, right? So, so I, I, I guess the closest comparison, just from a legal standpoint, I'm not saying this from a, a personal standpoint, it's kind of like for this aspect of the law, it's looking at the animal like you would look at um, uh, your non-Jewish worker, right? And, and, what's our, and I don't mean that he works for you like employee necessarily, but meaning we already talked about the concept of the problem of, not, of, of being around non-Jews on Shabbat is that if I have an obligation to keep Shabbat, it's very easy to circumvent my keeping of Shabbat by having a non-Jew and just letting the non-Jew do everything. And if the non-Jew does everything, then after a while, it's almost like there's no Shabbat. So therefore, the rabbis made a decree, which we saw, um, the rabbis made a decree that the non, in general, a non-Jew can't do work for you on Shabbat. Of course, there's many uh, ways that they can, and we, you know, we talked about that at a different time, so I don't want to get into that. But for sake of comparison, the same problem arises with an animal, uh, you know, meaning that I can't do certain things on Shabbat because it's a sewer for me to do. But if I have an animal next to me, I might be able to circumvent a great many Torah laws, and the Torah doesn't want me to circumvent those Torah laws, um, so, and, and to therefore not have a Shabbat. So therefore, much like I say about my non-Jewish friend or worker or whatever it may be, I can't just tell him, turn on the light for me on Shabbat or, or carry this burden for me on Shabbat. The same thing holds true with an animal. So we're seeing there's this additional thing. It's actually more severe in regards to animals because when it comes to a non-Jewish person doing melacha for me, the Torah never said it. The rabbis came along and made that decree because they saw the practical realities of the way things were working, and, and, and they said, no, no, you can't do that, right? But, but when it comes to the animal, it's actually understood that this is in the Torah itself, right? When the Torah said the animal can't work, there were two parts to it. The part one we talked about already was so the animal gets a break, but part two, part two was this part, which is that, hey, if you let your animal do work, then a guy is going to be able to kind of circumvent all his stuff, right? You know, I mean, so to speak, you know, again, I'm, I'm being a little exaggerated here. If I'll bring it into the modern world, right, it's kind of like I could train my dog to, 
to, to check the email or, or, or knock the phone off the hook when, when, when it rings or, and, and again, I'm being, a, I'm, I'm bringing it into the modern world, but, um, but in, in, in the world of the, of the, of the Torah, meaning the Bible and, and even the times of the Gemara, where the primary work that was being done was work in the field, carrying loads, moving burdens and things like that. Very easy to see how a guy could be doing, you know, be circumventing his Shabbat by saying, hey, uh, let this, uh, let this Jewish guy, let this Jewish guy, let, let this uh, animal do the work for me. And then poof, there goes Shabbat observance for everyone. And, and, and we didn't want that to happen. Um, and the Torah didn't want that to happen. So therefore, there's this additional concern about um, an animal doing the work for me uh, on Shabbat. It's not only about the animal resting, it's also about me having my work done or my objectives done by this animal. And we don't want that happening. Now, the difference here, why are there two different laws? Why, why wasn't the first law enough? Because you, you, you can realize that in the first law, it only matters if it's my animal. Right? If it's my animal, I need to take care of my animal having a rest. But now, if the, that's if it's a concern about a rest. But if the problem is a concern about me doing the work, it doesn't matter whose animal it is. Right? It could be an animal that belongs to a non-Jew. It could be an animal that belongs to nobody. Um, it would still be a problem for me to do the work. So, so there are these two different laws, um, and so this, this gets complicated, and we're not going to get to, to the real levels of complication of where this comes into play and so on. Again, as I said yesterday, we don't really own animals for the purpose of doing work anyway, but I, I just thought it was an interesting uh, uh, point to, make, to, to notice of, of how technical and how intricate the details can get because of the way that we look at the animals. Now, um, there's another concern, which again was the was the rabbinical concern, which is um, I can't use my 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 animal on Shabbat because of this other point, which is that if I put something on there, it may lead me to do other melachot like carrying in the public domain or something like that. So so that's all um, you know what's there now. Um, Good. Let me keep going. Asur l'shtamesh b'balei chayim b'shabbat gam k'shen abema osa melacha asura v'gam en b'shimush ba meshum isur mechamer meshum abera al shvitat tehemto v'lachen en rochvim al behema v'lo netlim alia v'afilu b'tzidei asur l'shtamesh. It says you're not allowed to even make the animal work on in certain ways where the work that it would be doing wouldn't be forbidden work on Shabbat. And what's one of the examples? The classic example is you're not allowed to ride the animal on Shabbat. Right. In other words, if I get on the back of the animal, right, and, and you know, like ride you know, ride a horse or get on the back of a cow or an ox or something like that and it's gonna carry me somewhere, um, there's not really a a milacha that's a sort from the Torah. I'm still not allowed to do that. Um, and the reason I'm not allowed to do that uh, is that there was a rabbinical decree against riding animals. Uh, the concern was that if you were going to be allowed to ride the animal, you do other work that is surrounding riding the animal. The specific work that they talk about is that um, you would um, detach a branch from a tree to use it as a, you know, kind of a move along, you know, I don't know what they call those things, a stick of some sort, um, which is just a way of, it's, it's not specifically that that person would do that exact thing, but meaning that the person would do work as a result of what he has done, and therefore they, they disallowed that. Um, now, let's keep going. Mutar lahorid min abehema kol davar sheyesh lo botzorek. He says, let's say now you see an animal that has a burden on it. Um, so he says, you're allowed to take the, 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 the item off the animal. Um, if you have a need for it on Shabbat, um, you're, you're, you're allowed to take the animal off. He says, but even if you don't have a need for it on Shabbat, if you see that the animal is, is uh, having difficulty with this burden or will have difficulty with this burden, you're allowed to take the burden off the animal on Shabbat because there's a concept in halacha called sa'ar ba'ale chayim, uh, causing pain to an animal. And uh, in general, and not, not always, um, we are forbidden to cause pain to animals. Uh, obviously, that rule doesn't apply across the board, because if that was true, um, then you wouldn't be able to eat meat, right? And you wouldn't be able to wear shoes, you know, and things like that. Um, so that's not the, where it comes into play. It, the, the general concept of tsar ba'le chayim is you're not allowed to have 
purposeless pain to an animal or excessive pain to an animal, right? Purposeless pain to an animal means just shoot it dead because you like it, right? You know, um, uh, you, you can't do that. So therefore, like hunting um, is, is a no-go. Um, but, um, and even when you're going to have an, even if you're going to have a purpose for it, right? Like, um, you know, for, for uh, I'm going to eat food or, or uh, uh, I'm going to wear leather clothing off of the animal, I'm allowed to kill the animal, but I'm not allowed to do so in a way that is excessive. Um, so the concerns, um, which are real concerns and, you know, people, uh, other people who are more uh, in tune with this nut will tell you about, you know, the way they, they prepare uh, chicken, veal, certain animals, are they, are they, um, I'm not even talking about the way they kill them. I'm talking about the way they raise them. Are, or, or, or are they treating them appropriately? So the halakha would say you have to, and you have to be careful about how you do it. Um, you can't cause excessive pain to animals. Okay. Um, that has, Robert, that has nothing to do with kashrut, though, no, correct? Just well, I, I mean, it, it depends on how you define what kashrut is. Uh, you know, uh, kashrut, it's not part of the law of shechita per se, right? The law of shechita is very specific to how you kill the animal. Um, but then there's this other concern, which is um, this big concept in halacha called tsar bale chayim. So I am, I do have to concern myself with that. So, so Joe, perhaps what you're raising is an important question, which is, you know, sometimes when we look at kashrut, we look at a very narrow aspect of what we mean by that. Um, right. You know, a, a number of years ago, there was a question that someone tried to do this. I actually considered going into this realm of halakha myself and maybe even making a business out of it. Um, you know, there's lots of what you call hashkacha for um, whether or not you can eat certain food or not. And uh, one of the things that I once considered doing was to create a hashkacha for businesses, um, to, to kind of go into people's businesses and uh, provide a you know, kind of a stamp of approval that the way you're conducting your businesses meets the, the, the halachic and ethical standards of halakha, right? Um, you know, because, because wow. you know, w w and, and it's a question, do we want to only do business with people that do business the right way, you know, they pay their workers on time. They're they they're in, they have integrity. They don't charge interest when they shouldn't, or whatever. You know, there's many many things that go into that. Um, so there's a question as to whether or not the, whether or not that's the case. So the same really should be holding true with uh, kashrut, right? Meaning, is kashrut only how sharp the knife is, you know, and and uh, whether or not I saw there was something uh, of, of a damage in the lung, or does it also expand? To the question of, hey, how did they uh, get to these animals? Did they treat their animals appropriately before they killed them? Were they knocking them around? You know, it, it, and is that my responsibility as a consumer of meat um, or whatever other product? You know, because because you know you'll 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 ask the same question. I mean, again, this, and now we're going to run into you know um, th th this came into uh, I, I remember this being a, a, a intriguing to me from who from Joseph Beta Allah uh, Shalom. You know, I remember. You know, I, my, my dad used to do a lot of business with him. You know, he was the accountant for the company for a long time. And, um, you know, it's, it's going back 20, 25 years, I guess, because already it's a long time that he passed. But, um, but uh, you know, I remember Joseph saying, and, 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 uh, and, and you can actually ask uh, my dad and, and his son, David, um, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, he, he wanted to make sure that his workers overseas were getting the kind of wages that the workers here get, you know, and, and everyone was like, you're crazy, you can't do that, you know, because it's, 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 it's not, you, you, you won't be able to do business that way. And, and, and but, but to him, he wanted to make sure, you know, he felt that his product had to be, you know, on that level and prepared on the level of kosher, you know, and kosher meant that I treat my workers well. So, you know, like there's a question about whether or not you can, you know, this ultimately becomes a question of, can I wear my Nikes, right? You know, if, if Nike is not treating their workers well in, 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 in China, right, you know, am I not allowed to wear Nike? So that's, that, that, that's my long answer to your short question, Joe, but, but a, a very important one. So it may not- when you have, Rabbi, when do you have a class specifically on that subject? 
Uh, it's a good question. I, I have not done one recently. Um, I, I'd have to put some stuff together, but maybe I will. I, I, certainly, we've got a lot of a lot of time on our hands. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of time on my hands, but people have a lot of time on their hands. Um, so, so it is a good. It, it is a big topic, and it's it's something that is of of great interest to me. So, another time, we only have yes. a minute or two left here, so, so I'm not, not going to be able to to treat that topic fully. But no, I'm, I'm glad that you brought it up, uh, uh, Joey Savag yeah. and Joey Shami as well. You know, to, it, it's definitely something that we should talk about. Uh, and, and where it comes into play. So, so I'll put it on my list of uh, classes to okay. give uh, in, in the not too distant future. Um, but, but just going back to, 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 to Joey's question on what this will end, even though we were, we're talking about Shabbat, but we, 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 we merged into the area of Kashrut, um, the, the halacha cares a lot about um, pain that we cause to animals if it's senseless, right? But, but there's some levels of pain that we can do, right? If the animal is carrying my burden that needs to be carried somewhere, and that's a normal way that an animal works, that's no problem. And if I'm gonna kill the animal in order to eat it, that's not a problem. But it's when I do things that are not necessary and beyond, that's where it becomes a problem, and we, we, we wanna stay away from those things. So uh, that's, my, uh, th that's where we're gonna stop today on this topic, and we'll pick up tomorrow. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. When people go fishing, uh, you, you, you take a hook and then you take the hook out of the mouth. Now, you take the hook out of that fish every time it's hurting that fish. Like, right. So it's, it a, it's a good it. question. It's a good question. I was wondering if they, I'm good. Ezra, Ezra Katan is not here, so I don't, you know, uh, uh, I didn't answer the fishing question. I know he's a, you know, a boat guy, but um, uh, so it seems like fish does not get in, put into this category of of pain to a living creature. Um, and, and that's probably because the way fish experience pain, if they do, is different than the way, um, you know, maybe a, a dog, a cow, or, or some other living creatures are. So therefore, um, we don't have that, um, uh, uh, that standard of uh, doing it. However, you know, whether or not, if, if we could determine that there are certain things that would be uh, super cruel, then perhaps listening Mishurat Hadin, we shouldn't do that either. But uh, in terms of hooking the animal, that doesn't seem to be a problem. And again, there's plenty of things that we can do to an ox, which we're allowed to, like, um, uh, you know, putting a brand on it or something like that. Goyim, boil a lobster, that's a bit. <laughs> well, like lobsters is a whole nother, uh, whole nother story, but... Uh, you know, but look, can, uh, uh, bugs is a whole other question. Mice, rats, there's a lot. It's, it's a big area of halakha. I'm not, I don't have time to go through all of it today. Uh, we want to get started with the tefillah. So, uh, so that's what we're going to do. Um, Dr. Thanks, Rabbi. Good morning, everybody. Take care. Good morning, everyone. Take care. Good morning.